I sometimes I write with my right hand, but I prefer my left hand. That's interesting. I read a very good, very smart book where it says that those who write with the left hand are very gifted and they have gifted children. The uh, Russian flight control team, they were talking with Katie Coleman about the fact that she's a uh, left-hander. This is a fact. I read it in a book. They say that the left-handed people are always the more talented than right-handed people. One minute readiness. Variagi, copy. We are ready. Variagi, everything is a according to schedule, and uh, we will be uh, broadcasting the launch live. Apollo Nespoli there on the right-hand side. T-minus five minutes and 30 seconds and counting. Launch control reports that the range of the Baikonur Cosmodrome is clear and that the Soyuz rocket is ready to begin its journey. T-minus five minutes and counting. Onboard systems have been switched to onboard control. Soyuz Commander Dmitry Kondratyev's cockpit displays and controls have been activated. The crew members will uh, close their helmets here soon and be on uh, internal suit oxygen and power. At the launch complex itself, there is actually a launch key that will be inserted into the launch bucker to ready the systems for tonight's launch. T minus four minutes and counting. T-minus three minutes and 30 seconds, the nitrogen purge of the engine combustion chambers is now taking place. All other systems are uh, working as expected. Start raining. T minus three minutes and counting. Viagi, how do you copy us? 163, have you loaded clear? T minus two minutes and 30 seconds. The booster tank is now being pressurized for flight. The two flight control teams, both here in Houston and in Moscow, are uh, steadily watching over 
uh, tonight's launch activities. T-minus two minutes and counting all systems still go for uh, this evening's launch. Dmitry Kondratiev, Katie Coleman, and Paolo Nespoli just a couple of minutes away from beginning their trip to the International Space Station. Copy. T-minus one minute and counting. The Soyuz is now on internal power. The automatic launch sequencer has been activated in the first umbilical tower. We'll be backed away from the booster itself. There on the ground in Baikonur, a crowd of uh, family and friends and NASA officials, as well as Roscosmos officials, are watching tonight's launch. Less than a mile away from the uh, Soyuz itself. T minus 30 seconds and counting. Dimitri, we have 24 seconds. Yes, Anthony College, we're ready for the launch. Okay, I will stay um, with you and I will continue communicating with you. Okay, that's nice. 10 seconds. Preliminary. Five seconds. Engines at maximum thrust and liftoff of the Soyuz TMA-20 as Katie Coleman, Paolo Nespoli, and Dmitry Kondratiev head toward the International Space Station. All the parameters of the control systems are within the norm. Okay, we copy. The Soyuz lighting up the night sky there at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. It's a good pitch program according to flight controllers. Functioning, uh, thrusters are stable. The Soyuz is delivering 102 tons of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. The first stage of the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter. It is burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of the flight. Pressure is normal. 60 seconds. Your pitch and roll are within the norm. One minute and 10 seconds into the flight, the velocity is at 1,100 miles per hour. 70 seconds, nominal flight. Dmitry, how's the G-load? Increasing? Slowly increasing, yes. You can hear the crew talking with the Russian uh, ground controllers, they're reporting that the uh, G-force is building up on them as the Soyuz continues to speed up. We're now at one minute and 37 seconds into the flight. Seconds, um, Katie Coleman, Paolo Nespoli, and Dmitry Kondratiev now officially on their way toward the International Space Station once again. Docking will take place on Friday, and of course we'll have live coverage here on NASA television. Hundred and ten seconds. So does it what does one minute fifty eight seconds into the flight, jettison of the four strap on boosters will take place. These have completed their job and have dropped away. At an altitude of twenty eight statute miles, the Soyuz is now traveling at about three thousand three hundred and fifty miles an hour. There are live view inside the Soyuz Palo Nespoli there on the right hand side. Dmitry Kondratiev there in the middle seat. He is the commander of the spacecraft. And on the left-hand side, just out of view, is Katie Coleman. Parameters of the launch vehicle are normal. Okay, copy. Everything is nominal on board. 150 seconds. All stages are functioning nominally. 
Have you noticed when you switched over to the second stage? Yes, a little bit bump and the change in the load. That's what we felt. Now, almost three minutes into the flight, the visiting vehicle officer here in time mission control has confirmed that the launch shroud has been jettisoned. There is Katie Coleman on the left-hand side. Issued. She and her colleagues about to begin a five or six month uh, trip to the International Space Station to join the in progress Expedition 26. 180 seconds. The Soyuz now traveling 4,700 miles an hour. Jet, fight, fighter jet. No. The Soyuz's core stage is performing as expected. The core stage is about 56 feet in length. 13 and a half feet in diameter with a single engine that has four fuel chambers providing 96 tons of thrust for its three minutes and 28 seconds of operation. On the, on the shuttle, when you flew, um, was the load higher or lower? Well, I have experienced the loads inside the centrifuge many times. Okay, the stabilization is uh, stable. Okay, copy. We see you. We see you. Katie Coleman there waving to the camera and everybody that's uh, watching her and the rest of the crew head towards space. The yeah, ground team there talking with Katie about her uh, experiences on board the space shuttle as she flew aboard space shuttle Columbia and uh, comparing it to the Soyuz flight that she is now uh, undertaking. 260 seconds, the parameters are within the norm. We copy. We're now four minutes and 40 seconds into the flight. Coming up here shortly, the core booster will burn out and separate at an altitude of 105 miles. The third stage will then ignite for the rest of the flight. Third stage thruster activation. Copy. We have confirmation that the second stage has separated. The separation of the third stage Yes, Anatoly Nikolaevich, we felt it. The Soyuz is now being propelled by the single engine of the Soyuz's third stage. This engine is providing 30 tons of thrust and will burn for four minutes and two seconds. Bayag, send the command R1. Okay, we copy. 330 seconds. Third stage uh, thruster is w w functioning sta in a stable manner. Okay, we copy. 340 seconds. All the parameters are within the norm. Three hundred and fifty seconds, nominal flight. Now six minutes into the flight, Paolo Nespoli, Dmitry Kondratiev, and Katie Coleman are faring very well during today's uh, launch. The uh, systems on board the Soyuz are also performing well. The ground teams in Moscow and also here in Houston are continuing to monitor the flight. The launch vehicle parameters are within the norm. Okay, copy. Three hundred and ninety seconds. Nominal work. Four hundred seconds. Stabilization is stable. Copy. We have interference. Now seven minutes and 20 seconds into the flight, once again, the Soyuz is flying under the call sign of Varangian. It was selected by the commander, Dmitry Kondratiev. It is named for the Vikings who came across Eastern Europe back in the ninth century. 
nominal flight. The velocity of the Soyuz now almost 13,500 miles an hour. Once the third stage delivers the Soyuz to orbit and the module is separated, a series of pre-programmed commands will be executed to prepare the Soyuz for orbital operations. These stored commands, called timed tagged commands, allow many of the Soyuz's systems to be automatically activated by onboard computers at precise times stored in those computers. 480 seconds. Control system parameters are within the norm. Four hundred and ninety seconds. The vehicle is stable. Okay, copy. Everything is nominal on board. Five hundred seconds. Nominal flight. Okay, so you're you're gonna have separation. I wish you luck. Successful work on board. The best wishes. Thank you, Anatoly Nikolaevich. Well, but good luck to you as well. Mariagi, we see the God, God, We copy sixteen three. Congratulations on the successful insertion and. The We're now nine minutes into the flight. The single single liquid fueled engine has shut down on the third stage and has dropped away at an altitude of one hundred twenty five statute miles. Variagi, MCC Moscow. Yes, this is Variagi. MCC Moscow, how do you read us? We have you loud and clear. We are expecting you to report to us on the progress of the insertion. We copy. Variagi. We do have the Kadu already for the ODR command. Okay, in work. Variagi, the command has been issued. Okay, copy. The team here in Houston also confirming that the solar arrays have been deployed. Once again, the Soyuz's orbit is going to be 143 miles by 118 miles. That orbit will be raised systematically over the course of the next two days, placing it in close proximity to the International Space Station for the final rendezvous and docking, which is set for 2.12 p.m. Central Time on Friday. We are ready to take the first measurement from you. Okay. Variagi, how do you copy? We understand that working perform z form 03. Okay, copy. Too, too low, inaudible. Variagi, we don't hear you. A lot of uh, interference, not clear, I understand. The parameters, parameter 15. Uh, do you read us? Uh, starting with parameter 17. Have you loud and clear, starting with parameter 17? Reading the numbers for the parameters. 20, 07, 2107, 22, 303. 23, 319, 24, 718, 25, 717, 26, uh, 260. The uh, Russian flight control team continuing to talk with this uh, crew on board this Soyuz, Dmitry Kondratiev, Paolo Nespoli, and Katie Coleman. The Russian flight control team will oversee the remaining uh, couple of days of the Soyuz's flight as it heads toward the International Space Station. As we mentioned, there's going to be a series of uh, engine firings that uh, that Soyuz will conduct to continue to fine-tune its orbit as it heads toward the orbiting complex. 
The first one will occur later on today at 5.02 p.m. Central Time. That will be a 7.07 .07 meter per second burn. The second one will be later on this afternoon as well at 5.39 p.m. Central Time. That will be a 13.46 meter per second burn. And then the final one will be tomorrow on Thursday at 1.49 p.m. Central Time. That will be a 2 meter per second burn. On Friday, final engine burns will be executed to place the crew and its Soyuz in the proper orbit for final rendezvous and docking. And as we mentioned, we'll have live coverage of all of that here on NASA television. So when you mark it down that you, you used the command radio link to deactivate television at 22 to 38 to 54, TV deactivation for program one. Repeat the second one, 22, 38, 54, deactivation for television per program one. Oryagi, MCC, Moscow. Go ahead. Next compass is at 2341. Okay, 2341. Dima, Vayagi, how do you read? Loud and clear. Have you loud and clear? Everything is nominal on board, further inaudible. Dima, yes. Can you hear me? This is 19, Solovio. Yes, I have you loud and clear. Everything good on our side, congratulations. On the successful orbital insertion, everything is good, everything pressure, pressurized the way it was supposed to, and the telemetry is all nominal, so. As we talked about today, be very careful, very precise, no, not, no rush. You have a difficult, busy day ahead of you, a busy night ahead of you, so proceed. Okay, thank you for your good wishes, and we're ready to work. Varyagi, MCC Moscow, we are ready to take the five-minute reading. Copy. Pressure in this uh, 797. Varyagi, MCC Moscow, the vehicle is on orbit. The elements of the structure have been deployed. You have our go to... Lift the visors and loosen the shoulder straps. Reading the numbers for inclination and uh, orbital altitude. We copy. Also, thermal sensors will be deactivated at the set time. We copy everything.
This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, we're looking at a live shot inside the Soyuz TMA-20. There on the right-hand side is Paolo Nespoli. In the middle there is Dmitry Kondratiev. He is the Soyuz commander. On the left side, just out of view, is Katie Coleman. And at the next orbit, we will be expecting a report on the leak checks check and we'll perform test number one. This crew had a very successful launch today, lift, lifting off at uh, 109 p.m. Central Time, which was 109 a.m. there at the launch site at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Uh, at 2341-0. Zero, zero as the, the start of the compass, you need to deactivate us. You need to activate a cigar. Okay, copy. Deactivate a cigar. No, activate a cigar. Okay, copy. Activate a cigar. More information, RRP and Chaika start will be done via the command radio link. Okay, we copy on the command radio link. 